Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm taking a look at Gamora, the other character in the Guardians of the Galaxy that got a T4, as expected. People were also thinking that Warlock would get a T4 instead of her, but as it turns out with the latest teaser, both characters have or will have T4s. One of the benefits of Gamora getting a T4 is that she is speed, female, and alien tagged, which means that you can use her for a bunch of different restrictions that there aren't too many characters with the same tags for. Overall, the character's value will lie primarily in PvE, probably more so in things like pushing World Boss Legend and for certain ABX and ABL days. For PvP, she doesn't really have too much inner kid going for her, she does have penetration on a bunch of different skills, which is nice, but outside of that, she doesn't really have anything else. But if you're interested to see how she performs in PvP, you can just stick around to the later part of the video where I show some clips in Timeline and Alliance Conquest. Just for reference, all the testing that you see in this video are done without a damage proc and just with an invincible obelisk. As with my other videos, if a character already has an Awakening or T3, I take them straight into the stage 9 null test where I don't use a leadership or support. Even though Gamora has her own leadership, I don't use it in this test. And you can see that with her new uniform, her PvE damage increases quite a bit. She is able to clear stage 9 of null well above the curve for characters that are good in PvE. She completes it with around 3 minutes and roughly 20 seconds remaining. You can see that her damage holds up because even on stage 29, without using her leadership supports or proc, she's able to complete the first phase in 2 minutes, which means that she can complete the stage entirely. She does lack a little bit of ignore dodge in her kit because it's limited to just her awakening skill, which provides 70% for 10 seconds, so you will have some downtime but it seems like it is a little bit mitigated because you also have that great passive that gives you damage dealt to supervillains and superheroes, and because she has her own leadership, which means that you can utilize another support that can provide that ignore dodge, as well as additional damage to villains or heroes too. Just for reference, if you're wondering how the old uniform compares to the new one, with the new uniform, she's about a minute faster on stage 29, and with the old one, she takes about 3 minutes to complete the first phase, which means that she can't complete stage 29 with the old uniform, but can with the new one. I also took her into a stage 44 of Null, but this time utilizing a leadership and support, and she wasn't quite able to complete the first phase in 2 minutes. She was about 3 seconds short, so maybe if I played her a little bit better, she could have but it kind of shows you where she's at. She can almost complete stage 44 with no damage proc, but using leadership and supports. As you can see, she is quite solid for PvE, so if you want to build her for that, you can definitely utilize a single skill damage proc like an energy or a destruction. She is quite proc friendly. However, if you want to push scores in things like Alliance Battle Extreme or Alliance Battle Legend, possibly even use her in Giant Boss Raid, then a Rage will more than likely be your best option there. If you're able to get a Reforged Rage, it might be the best option overall because she does have guaranteed crit in her kit and also provides you with crit damage. So you're basically utilizing every part of the Rage, whereas if you're using something like a CTP of Energy, you won't really get much use out of the crit damage, though the Chain Hit and the Ignore Dodge will be pretty useful though. Once I got the character to level 80, she was able to complete the first phase about a minute faster, and then was able to complete the stage entirely with about a minute and 40 seconds left. Ironically enough, I also completed stage 49 faster than stage 44 by a few seconds, but that's mostly attributed to the strikers and the better support. I also forgot to mention earlier that you can get a bit of ignore dodge from the character's artifact, which I believe many people should already have because of the personal collector's vault that happened earlier. Because Gamora has a type advantage versus Mephisto, considering she's a speed type and he is a blast type, I was able to go as high up as stage 69 without a damage proc and still able to complete the stage with a good amount of time left over, about 30 seconds or so. Unfortunately, without a proc, she can't really go too much higher. I tried to see how she would do on stage 79, but she was about 30 seconds short of that first phase completion time to be able to complete the fight entirely. At level 80, she was able to do stage 24 of gore with almost two minutes left. However, the next highest restriction that she has access to 
was 44 and with gore moving around so much and dodging attacks that lack of a damage proc really showed and she wasn't able to complete it she ran out of time with about 10 health bars left even though the character is pretty solid in world boss i suspect that her greatest value will be in alliance battle modes since you can use her for the speed hero restriction in alliance battle extreme and the similar one, the female speed type for Alliance Battle Legend. She pretty much has all of the cancel effects for all the different seasons for Alliance Battle Extreme and Alliance Battle Legend. She has Silence, Paralysis, and Burn for ABX, and for ABL she has Snare, and you can use pretty much anything else on the T4 that she is missing. As you can see just at level 80, I was able to score around 9.2 million without a damage proc, meaning that with a single skill damage proc, I should have been able to hit around 10 million-ish, and then with a rage, probably around 11 million just at 80, meaning that at T4, she's easily able to cap ABX at least. I obviously can't verify this because I don't have the character at T4, but apparently from what I've seen, the character is meta for the speed female day in ABL, I was able to score around 2 million without a damage proc, which might seem horrible, but with a damage proc that would be around 3 million, and then with a rage it should be close to 4 million, meaning that at T4 she should be able to hit that 6 million mark to get all of the rewards, and then with a better build you can probably push 7 or 8 million at least on my account for the ones that are focused on score based modes, then that could be well over 8 million, 9 million or more. The rotation for the character is pretty easy. You do 3, cancel 4, delay cancel after she throws out those little mini grenades, and then go into the 5th skill. When you have your awakening skill, you use that first and you can quick cancel it and just do the same rotation as before. 3, cancel 4, delay cancel 5. Even when I had the character at level 70, I was able to complete the first phase of Dormammu within that 2 minute window within about a minute and 30 seconds, which means that she can complete this fight by herself, even with no damage proc. Similar to Groot, Gamora's PvP usability will probably be limited to mid-level characters, not so much metas, because she doesn't really have PvP stats or skills in her kit. The best that she has is penetration across two skills. She has 100% penetration on her third skill and around 60% on her fourth skill for a limited duration of around 3 seconds uptime. Besides that, she has partial iframes on pretty much every skill but the first skill, so that is decent for her survival, along with the 30% heal on the third skill and the invincible on the fifth skill. Her AI skill rotation isn't too bad, though it could be better. She usually opens with the third skill that provides you with that 100% penetration, as well as the damage accumulation, which then is followed up by the fifth skill that gives you a damage buff and invincibility. She doesn't really ever utilize the fourth skill unless her other skills are on cooldown, and she usually sticks with the rotation of 3, 5, and 2. Similar to Groot, a few of her skills do have lingering effects, which is nice because she can take out the opponent even after she dies. But considering that her skill priority is a little bit low and that she already has penetration in her kit, I'd probably recommend a similar build to Groot, which is going with the CTP of Authority. You could also try out a CTP of Greed if you wanted more of a chance to take out meta characters, but again, similar to Groot, she's probably going to perform more consistently versus mid-level characters by having a defensive or survival-based build. I didn't really have much chance to test her in Alliance Conquest, but that third skill opening with 100% penetration in the AoE and the fact that she is awakened made her pretty good for taking out mid-level characters, especially since once she cleared the first team, she could basically just wipe the second team pretty easily. I obviously didn't cover the T4 because I don't have her at T4, but when you do upgrade her to T4, she basically gets 50% chain hit damage at max level, as well as healing, which makes it really good for pushing those high stages of World Boss Legend. Again, for most people that want to T4 this character or that already have her at T4, it's probably to push to higher scores of ABX or ABL, and for most people that want a T4 speed character that don't have one already, I'd say that Spider-Man or even a character like Shadow Shell is probably better value overall because you can utilize them in PvP too. There's also the expectation that Luna Snow will get a T4 pretty soon since Sharon Rogers got her T4 and historically they've been updated together most often. 
So when she does get her T4, people are kind of expecting that she'll be the predominant speed T4 character in the game. I'd probably say it's best to wait at this point, considering that Adam Warlock also got his T4 teased, and seeing how Jean Grey and Thanos perform so well in both PvE and PvP regardless of builds, he might be one of the better options to go with in terms of the value that he provides. That pretty much wraps up this one. I was going to get this and the Groot video out earlier, but it was the long weekend in Canada last weekend, so I didn't really get a chance to do that. However, if you found this video informative, useful, or entertaining, please consider liking or subscribing if you haven't already, and possibly sharing the video with others, since, like I've said a couple of times now, it helps my channel grow, and it probably helps them out too. As always, I do appreciate people taking the time to watch my videos, so thank you, but the video is now over.